Okay, welcome to another lesson. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to look at uh, an exam that was tested. Uh, this exam was tested uh, in December 2022, and uh, we are specifically looking at questions on descriptive statistics. So, uh, this is question number. This is question number four B, and uh, the question reads uh, the following data relates to the number of computers sold each day over the last 240 working days by a leading computer firm. Here we have the number of computers sold and the number of days. So the first question you are required to determine the model class, uh, the model number of computers sold. So uh, as, a, as a step, you need to remember the formula. How do we find the mode? Yeah, how do we find the mode? So, you need to remember this formula. I gave you this formula in our previous class when I was giving you the notes. So, this formula, you need to keep it in mind. Now, uh, this is the formula. Now we need to pick the values and substitute. The first step is to identify the model class. The model class refers to that class with the highest frequency. This class I've circled here. This is the model, the model class. So L is the lower class limit. So here I will put the lower class limit, 30 plus D1 is the frequency of the model class minus the frequency before divided by the same d1 plus <coughs> excuse me d2 is the frequency of the model class minus the frequency after then you multiply by the class width what is the class width in this case five <coughs> i hope you know how to find the class width we are just taking the upper class limit uh, minus the lower class limit. Now, uh, moving forward, we need to come and simplify this. Here we have 30 plus 50 minus 42. 50 minus 42, I find this is 8. 8 divided by 8 plus 5, then times 5. What do you get here? 30 plus, what is 8 times 5 divided by 13? 8 times 5 divided by 13, this is 3.077. So, my mod or the model production which we are looking for is 33.077. Now, that's how we find the model production. The next one, they're asking you to look for, determine or get the quartile deviation of the number of computers sold. Similarly, you need to ask yourself or remember the formula. If you're looking for quartile deviation, quartile deviation, this is the same as semi-interquartile range. Semi-interquartile inter, semi range. Semi-interquartile range means you get Q3 minus Q1 divide by 2. Now, I go back to my data and get a column for cumulative frequency. Here, I will get a column for cumulative frequency. I will begin, this is 12. 12 plus 18, that is 30. 30 plus 35, 65. 65 plus 42, 107. 107, 107 plus 15, 157. 157 plus 45, 157 plus 45, this give me 202, this is 202, plus 30, this is 232, 232, plus 8, 240. Now, it comply with the requirements or the values given in your data. Remember, from the question you are told, in the last 24, 240 working days. Now, 
Having found the cumulative frequency, I need to know how to find Q3. Get to know how to find each element here. So Q3 is supposed to be L plus 3 over 4N minus CF divided by F multiplied by the class width. So L is the lower class limit of, so here, 240, I need to find, uh, I need to find 3 over 4 times 240. What is 3 over 4 times 240? 3 divided by 4 times 240, and this gives me 180. So I need to know where 180 lies in my cumulative frequency. 180 will be in this class. Let me circle so that uh, it, uh, it gets understood well. So, this circle here. This is where my 180 belongs. Eh? So, the lower class limit here will be that 5. So, the lower class limit here, I will have, this will be 35 plus 180 minus, I look for the frequency before which is before uh, 180 is 157 and the cumulative frequency before and the frequency of that class is 45 so 157 i minus 1 i minus 157 divided by the frequency of that class which is 45 i hope that is understood the frequency of this class is here this one 45 the frequency of this class so then the class width. Look at the data and get the class width. The class width is that 5 minus 30, which give me 5. This give me 5. So I will have 35 plus what? This is 180 minus 157 divided by 45. Then times 5. This give me 2.55. This is 2.56. So, plus that 5. So, this gives me that 7. That 7.56. That will be my Q3. I have to move on and find my Q1. Q1, the formula is, uh, we need to find Q1. This is L plus 1 over 4N minus CF divided by F times I. Now, what is my L? L is obtained by 1 over 4 times 240, which is 60. Come and find where my class, which has 60 here. So, my 60 will belong in this class. Yeah, My 60 will belong in this class. This is where my 60 belongs. So, the lower class limit here will be 20, and the frequency will be that 5. Yeah, the lower class limit, if I come here, the lower class limit here will be 20 plus 60 minus, what is the frequency before that class? The frequency before that class is 30, and the frequency is 35. So, I minus 30, minus 30, uh, divided by that 5 times 5. What is this? So, I will have 60 minus 30 divided by that 5 times 30. This give me 25. So, this is 20 plus 20. Just a minute. Let me do it again. This is 30 divided by that 5. 0 0.8 times 5. Sorry. This give me 4.2. Sorry for that. This one. This I'm talking about 60 minus 30 is 30. Divide by that 5. Give me 0 0.857 times 5. This give me 4 point. This give me uh, 4.285. So add 20. It will give me 20.4. This is 24. This will give me 24.285. This will be my. Now let me substitute to get the quarter deviation, which is Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. This simply implies 
I need 37.56 minus 24.285 divided by 2. What is the answer here? That 7, uh, that 7, that 7.56 minus 24.285, 13.2 divided by 2. And that give me my quartile deviation. What is the answer? 6.6375. Good. Having found the quartile deviation, we move to the last part. You are asked to get the coefficient, the quartile coefficient of skewness. And uh, the quartile coefficient of skewness of the number of computers sold and interpret your answer. Now, you need to look at the, uh, the formula first. Uh, we need to look at the formula. Quartile coefficient. We need to look at the formula for quartile coefficient coefficient of skewness. Here, the formula is you get Q3 plus Q1 minus 2Q2 divided by Q3 minus Q1. So the only thing missing here is Q2, which is our median. We have not been asked to look for the median before, so we need to find our Q2 first. Q2 will be L plus N over 2 minus CF divided by F times I. So what is N over 2? That is the total frequency here was uh, 200 and what? 240. If I divide by 2, I need to find my median and coincidentally my median will be the same class as the model class. So I'll do what? I'll come here and find my lower class limit here. This is where we have our median because our 120, 240 divided by 2, our 120 will be here. Yeah. So the lower class limit in that class will be 30. So I'll have this will be 30 plus 120 minus cumulative frequency before the median. Uh, it is 107. This is 107. 107 divided by the frequency of that class. What is the frequency of that class? Uh, 120 is here. The frequency is 50. And the class width is 5. The frequency is 50. The frequency is 50. And the class width is 5. What do we end up with? 30 plus... 120 minus 107, 120 minus 107, this gives me 13, divided by 50, times 5, this gives me 1.3, 1.3, so my median becomes that 1.3. Now, having found Q2, we now substitute in our formulas here. I have Q3 as 37.56 plus Q1 as 24.285 minus 2 times Q2 divided by Q3 37.56 minus Q1 24.285. So what do you find here? 37.56 plus 24.285. This gives me this minus 62.6. Do you know why I'm saying 62.6? That is that 1.3 times 2. That is 62.6. What do I end up with? I'm getting negative. A negative, uh, negative 0 0.755 divided by that 7.56 minus 24. 0.285 this give me what so this is negative 0 0.05687 uh, 
we can approximate this to two decimal places and say negative 0 0.057. Now, into three decimal places. Now, in this case, or uh, you can, the best way in any uh, exam situation, leave your answer in four significant figures. Let's do that. This will be, in four significant figures, will be, remember, uh, zero is not significant in this case. So I can just leave my answer as negative 0 0.05687. There is no harm. So you are, I hope that is understood. Let me do it again so that you get what I said. We are saying you have that 7.56 plus 24.285. I got 61.845. I minus 62.6, which is that 1.3 times 2. I got negative 0 0.755. Divide by that 7.5. 56 minus 24.285 and this give me negative 0 0.0568738 so I, I have recommended for an exam situation you leave your answer into four significant figures and that would be more appropriate otherwise to interpret this we can say the the data is negatively skewed you can see this one, negative zero point. So we can say the coefficient, the coefficient of skewness, the coefficient of skewness, the coefficient of skewness is negative zero point zero five six eight seven. Therefore, therefore, negatively 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 skewed therefore is negatively skewed now that's how you are supposed to solve this question and score your full marks you can see this question had had so many marks so it was worthy the marks otherwise we are going to stop there in, uh, in this video we meet uh, in our next video and for now it's a goodbye